Namaste. As we know, it is the 150th birth anniversary of Sri And during the course of my travels, people often asked, how should we celebrate the centenary, sesquicentenary? And obviously, uh, as many people, as many views, each valid and invalid, depending on the stage, the perspective, the angle of vision. So I just thought we'll touch upon that a little. But yes, uh, we must understand that the centenary, um, how the mother has described that these are moments when there are special descent of forces, just like birthdays. Shurabindu's birthday was always a cause of celebration and Shurabindu has said that this is a day when there is a special descent of forces. So during such period when there is a special descent of forces, what is needed is that we should be able to receive them. That's the bare minimum. And we can best receive in a state of quietude, in a state of aspiration, in a state of surrender, full of faith, full of trust. So that is the baseline. Sometimes that's where the paradox comes that if the celebration consists of too many uh, vital activities from morning till night, um, and we know that, you know, especially in Indian context, uh, uh, when people get jubilant and celebrate, they, they don't have a limit because we are very warm and rich people <laughs> inwardly. <laughs> so uh, at times, you know, food and this and that. And so this is what we should be careful about. Nothing wrong with these things. They are part of life. They can be part of the celebration. I mean, prasadam is prasadam in every temple. But it should be in that spirit. So first thing necessary in any dars- on any darshan day, and especially on such a special days, to remain inwardly quiet open, receptive. The best way to do that is to be full of aspiration and faith, to take their name, to have a heart full of gratitude. And I suppose if we can do that, that itself is not as easy as it looks. It's much easier to have big programs, much more difficult to be inwardly quiet and receptive. Then we would have done what is truly expected of us. But quite naturally, um, people want to do some programs. It's... uh, Partly, if you know, we associate uh, things, such moments with festivity, sometimes we do want to express our gratitude in certain ways. Sometimes we feel also that, well, uh, it's a day of celebration, we just let it go very quietly. Though none of these are really valid things because uh, celebrations are on one day, but in a certain sense, the yoga has to continue throughout life. And that's how the mother put it in one of her messages, to celebrate the birth of a transient body can satisfy some faithful feelings. But to celebrate the advent of a new world is a rare and exceptional privilege and that can be done at every moment. That's what we also see in mother's messages subsequently. But at the same time, since this is a need and people will observe it in different ways, not just with quiet meditation, which is an ideal case scenario where a group of people just meet, quietly meditate and inwardly offer themselves, rededicate themselves to Sri Aurobindo and his work. Still a question arises that should one go further and if so, how much further? Is there a proscription and prescription about a right thing or a wrong thing? Well, when mother was uh, asked with regard to one of the um, one, I think now it's published as a book and there's an exhibition being held in the ashram, um, exhibition hall, homage to Sri when somebody had prepared a kind of a uh, picture poster. So she gave three words and I think that's the important thing in all celebration, whatever way we do. Well, technically or um, if you see yogically, any work can be done in the yogic spirit. It becomes yogic or unyogic depending on the spirit. So, uh, well, one can celebrate in, in a big way as it is told or in a small way, in a humble way, depending on the resources, depending upon uh, how one wishes to. But three words which she gave are most important. Uh, one is sincerity. It should not be that under the guise of celebrating Sri birthday, we are trying to achieve some other results. Especially when we, you know, invite politicians, when you invite big people, so-called big people. Uh, Mother has interesting messages for that. She says that it does not, uh, um, 
very clearly she says that this idea of big people and small people that's really very human concept it has no value uh, in terms of well known or distinguished this is one of the letters it is true that there is in most people here this running after those who come from outside especially if they are well known or distinguished it is a common weakness of human nature and like other weaknesses of human nature the sadhak seem not inclined to get rid of it it is because they do not live sufficiently within so the vital gets excited or attracted when something important or somebody important or considered so comes in from outside so there is a tendency for this to happen and another similar message it may be said generally that to be over anxious to pull people especially very young people into the sadhana is not wise so this again because you know one gets into conflict yoga is the most difficult specialized endeavor so one must understand its gravity you don't enroll everybody for a mountain climb so you don't uh, start telling okay i'm going to mount everest let's all come together there is somebody who is prepared through lives who knows how many lives that one has reached to a point where one can take up the path of yoga so we need to be very clear on that that uh, while when we start a big journey say climb to mount everest everything is at the same level so everybody is really happy people often carry a lot of baggage that you know we eat food on the way we'll have picnic not realizing that as you grow higher and higher even your survival is going to be <laughs> a tough job so shobindu never encourage this idea of pulling people these are not occasions to uh, pull in lot of people into the yoga that call has to go from the divine and one thing is very clear repeatedly in shobindu's writings and mothers writings we are not an organization which is indulging in proselytization we are not here to convert anybody to a kind of faith if we celebrate it is in the spirit of joy and gratitude to shurbindo people may get touched may get you know affected in different ways and which is fine but we are not here to do it with that intention so that she says very clearly especially with regard to uh, well known people another letter of the mother which is in- interestingly a letter which is both i have seen in shurbindo's works and the mother's works so well known or unknown has absolutely no importance from the spiritual point of view it is simply the propagandist spirit they think and say oh if the name of the person is mentioned i won't say if <coughs> k comes the whole of <coughs> this state will be ours as if we were a party or a church or religion seeking adherents or proselytizers one man who earnestly pursues the yoga is of more value than a thousand well known men so we must understand that this is not the typical religious quasi spiritual cult sect etc it's an endeavor and not all are ready and not all are uh, well we don't use the word fit but not all have the call for this yoga and without the call for this yoga well people are in different stages that's a different matter altogether but that should not be the spirit there is another very interesting letter which of course can be seen in both ways so we need to understand this letter a little more it's a very famous letter which used to be at one point of time given by such especially people in the ashram long standing they like to hand over this letter sometime one has to uh, remind that there is another letter which is of a very different flavor so this letter um states i don't believe in advertisement though this letter mother wanted especially to be given in oroville so i don't believe in advertisement this letter by shurvindo i don't believe in advertisement except for books etc books need to reach people so one of the things which centers and other places they can do is make sure when those books are available that is what is a main activity to for people to study to make them you know um, drawn to these books you know after that the rest is uh, automatically done so i don't believe in advertisement except for books etc and in propaganda except for politics and patent medicine so sure when the sense of humor comes there <laughs> and we are not a political party and not you know uh, 
there are healing programs, for instance, patent medicine, that uh, as if by Shurabindu's yoga, uh, healing through this, this is all propaganda. You must understand, Shurabindu doesn't guarantee or promise these things. Very careful, yoga for this, yoga for that. First of all, we are, you know, bringing down the word yoga many notches below this, not the ways Shurabindu used the word. Now, people can do it, it's their business. But they should know it is nothing to do with Shurabindu's yoga or celebrating their centenary, no, sesquicentenary, but people do it. That's a different matter. Um, it's their business, but people fall sick, people fall sick even here. Because healing, illness, they are very complex phenomena and we should not try to uh, reduce them to a set of exercises, which yoga is certainly not. Uh, often people ask me this question that uh, in Hatha Yoga also you stress uh, upon the body and its health and vigor. And in Shubhindu's yoga, body is the last ultimate change. So what is the difference? It's, I mean, question is very absurd, seen from one way. Hurt yoga, the practices of hurt yoga, asanas, pranayam included, are meant to keep the body in a reasonably healthy state so that you can engage with sadhana. If you see in Patanjali's Astang yoga, asana, pranayam, so that your body is not restless, it doesn't throw energy and you have to be healthy. You can't be falling sick every three, four months and then, you know, Engaging in sadhana. So the purpose is very different. Where And naturally it will prolong your life. But uh, it's not like aim is to prolong life. But uh, enough so that you can at least complete the last phase which is moksha nyas. So that much you should go through. But here it's about the transformation of the body so that the body can manifest the divine. It's a very different thing altogether. And when the body begins to receive the divine impact, the impact of divine energies, it may even begin to break down. So, Sri used to say, why physical health is so much necessary uh, as a condition uh, through inner means as well as external means is because the impact of the divine Shakti entering the Aadhar, if the Aadhar is unprepared, it can even break down. So, this is the whole goal process, everything is different. So, um, Shubhindu further reminds us, but for serious work, it is a poison. He not only says, don't get into it, but it is poisonous to do that. It's harmful, it's dangerous. Something like this, he also explains in the human cycle, where he says that, you know, what humanity does, he picks up an ideal and very often just pays a lip service. And that's how religions are formed, where you pay lip service, but you forget the core, you forget the originating impulse, and you meet and greet and go for a Sunday church and then, you know, you, you are just the same person. Nothing has changed inside you. It means either a stunt or a boom. Huge celebration, huge mega things, mega shows. You know, we have those pandals and people have Durga Puja. All around is Mahisasur's uh, uh, eateries and Mahisasur's, all things is going on. Well, it satisfies some uh, vital feelings in man. When mother was asked, why do men celebrate festivals? He said, men like festivals. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so it's not about being good or bad, but we must understand what, uh, what is what. And stunts and booms exhaust the thing they carry on their chest and leave it lifeless and broken, high and dry on the shores of nowhere. Or it means a movement. So first is that very often people celebrate for a day and the next day, you know, that's happened to most of the celebrations, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I, I can say in the Indian context, uh, uh, the same thing applies everywhere. Uh, in the Indian context, we have holy, people play with colors in the morning, in the evening, you know, many of them take bhang as a way of life and then all kinds of, you know, songs which are meant to, they're very, I mean, it's a purely vital thing. Um, sometimes even degrading words in the name of celebration. But Holi in its origin is so beautiful. Holi is a festival where you are all supposed to be coloured by Shyam, the divine Krishna. So it's so beautiful in its origin. And if you remember that, then the whole thing changes. Same thing we see with um, Diwali. Something so beautiful is the conquest of light over darkness. It was never celebrated with Patakas. Leave alone Chinese crackers. Please don't buy. It has nothing to do with, you know. Uh, anyways, Indian origin, Deepavali was literally Deepavali. So you light up the lamps in the night, which is so beautiful. It's like so many stars have come down on earth and are filling the earth. So if you look at Deepavali as stars upon earth, Tare Zameen Par, 
it's so beautiful but when you have those boom and noise and you know all kinds of pollutant basically it has been corrupted by the asuri kimpas they are the ones who like this kind of boom so one day one night you have it then people will pray to lakshmi then play um, uh, jua gambling so this is not the way things should be done it is a corrupted way of celebrating something beautiful we must celebrate in the sense it's beautiful to remember and light up a home with candles and lights and diyas but not this way so he says that when we have these kind of stunts and booms it means they leave they exhaust us and leave it lifeless and broken high and dry on the shores of nowhere or it means a movement sometimes a celebration is to trigger a whole movement so there should be there something to say a movement in the case of a work like mine means the founding of a school or a sect or some other damn nonsense shubhendra is a way of you know being <laughs> we are not a sect or creed or a cult where we are attracting people is a new movement come let us you know or a new religion none of those things so what it is it means that hundreds or thousands of useless people join in and corrupt the work or reduce it to a pompous farce from which the truth that was coming down recedes into secrecy or silence truth has its own way of coming when the sun comes most often it comes where nobody even is ready to greet it how quietly how gently it comes from the mountain tops if you go and visit kanchanjunga it's all golden color kailash mount everest then story it comes into the plains there is no beating of drums there is a chirping of birds <laughs> and the whisper of the winds that the sun has come sun has come it doesn't come through you know as mother said in one of her messages the advent of a new world is not announced by the beating of drums so sun comes it is self existent it doesn't need to announce itself so here she he says very clearly that it is not supposed to become a pompous farce from which the truth that was coming down recedes into the secrecy or silence you see christmas celebrations all around you know with all those jing bang at 12 o'clock suddenly but that is still okay better than since i am mentioning these religions than you know than mohram where you beat your chest and you uh, you know punish yourself and you are bleeding and you say oh i, I wish we, you were there i was there It's okay. You were not there, but this is not the way to celebrate. Somebody gave his life for you, and you are further mortifying itself. That's of course a very rakshasic, um, to say the least. It is what has happened to the religions, and is the reason of their failure. Ultimately, it becomes a cult or creed where only an external externalities remain, and the real thing escapes. So, um, if one reads this passage. it's very clear it is about the spirit of propaganda spirit of propaganda is uh, mother gives the example of tolstoy's son if everybody spoke the same language how nice it'll be if everybody followed shurbindo if everybody turned toward that is a propaganda spirit creation is not meant to be like that also not all are ready because there are different stages there will be this is the spirit of sanatan dharma we celebrate um, you know diversity through which people come and those who have to come to shirbindo will come after a long journey in their own way when they will come how they will come what are their outer qualification we don't know so we should not get into that but at the same time now see the mother writes uh, shirbindo writes another letter this one is also by shirbindo the one which i read 1934 and then there is another in on 1937 in 1937 mother does not set much value on propaganda but still work of that kind can be her work so there is the other kind there are people now they are not in a propaganda spirit but they want mother i want sir bindu to be known whole world should know him he is so beautiful it's like that spirit is different it's not a spirit of converting anybody but the spirit is you have discovered a rare jewel you know the story of the mahatma who received a mantra and when he received a mantra his guru told him that this mantra will liberate you but don't share it with anyone and the first thing this disciple did was this true story incidentally i'm forgetting the name of the saint he ha ah, ramanujam that's right thank you and he is a great yogi so he goes and actually he openly <laughs> spoke of that mantra and his guru said you may go to hell he said okay i accept it 
but something as powerful and as beautiful. Now this is a different spirit altogether. He was not trying to convert anybody. It may look like propaganda, but he had discovered something invaluable, priceless. So in the spirit of uh, unity, oneness, uh, the spirit that everybody should be redeemed by what I have discovered, he was sharing it. So there is a difference between a propagandist spirit which wants to convert people this way or that way by very often by falsehood, by as I said that if you come, you do this, you will be healed. If you do this, this will happen to you. Uh, not that one would not be healed, but that's not the spirit. Yoga is yoga and it's not a fitness course. You must understand the difference. But here is someone who is so much overtaken by the joy of sharing what he has discovered with the world. And we know that he became one of the, uh, himself a founder of a very major school of philosophy and uh, a great saint in his own right. So she says, Shobindo says that it can be done if one feels. But then here comes the but. Only it has to come from her impulsion. Be done with quietude, with measure, in the way she wants it to be done. So here we have to be little careful sometimes when we are over enthusiastic, especially about politicians. So when politicians come, I have seen sometimes that we are waiting for them. We should be very clear, this is the time, time we will do it. If they are late, they come and join. Just like in ancient times, kings would go to the ashramas and they would quietly wait at the feet of the master. That is the spirit. So they come like any of us. They are coming as seekers, not as, you know. So this is the spirit in which, you know, it should be done. And if they come, uh, okay, they are, you know, it should be done when we feel inwardly moved to do that. Second in quietude and measure. Measure means that don't go overboard in spending God knows you know, having those diamond glittering. Again, if somebody has that and wants to put that shingar over mother, you know, <laughs> it depends on what attitude you do it. I have seen Tirupati Balaji's that one day when, you know, you do that shingar. Now, seen from one side, it, you know, uh, so many diamonds, but seen from another angle, it does look beautiful. You see that baby Krishna's smile and you have those all diamonds and you feel if at all diamonds need to be somewhere it is here they should go so it depends so she is he is repeatedly saying it should be in measure but it should be done quietly it should not be that people are just rushing and as you know we, we find sometimes in places be done with quietude with measure in the way she wants it to be done sometime mother has said you know when Shubhindu's relics went to Bengal uh, I believe the mother was very clear that only if the chief minister comes to receive the relics, will she give the relics. Because she said that Bengal rejected Shirobindo. So it was properly done with, you know, ministerial, the state received with all the state honours Shirobindo's relics. So even there, but it should be quiet. It should be done with that sense of measure. It is from the inner being that it should be done in union with the mother's will. Those involved should remain inwardly oriented. Not from the vital mind's eager impulse. And it is very difficult unless one is really state focused in yoga. There is a tendency for crowds to build up, for people coming with all kinds of ulterior motives and that corrupts the work. To concentrate most on one's own spiritual growth and experience is the first necessity of the sadhak. Nothing should be done at the expense of this. To be eager to help others draws away from the inner work. To grow in the spirit is the greatest help one can give to others. For then something flows out naturally to those around that helps them. So this is the basic essence and in the end, just this very interesting message, which kind of summarizes it. So the disciple asks, is asking, Sweet Mother, often when I read Sri works or listen to his words, I am wonderstruck. How can this eternal truth, this beauty of expression escape people? 
I think most of us go through this stage. I mean, I have gone through this stage. Oh, how could you miss it? How can one not read it? How can one leave it halfway through? The moment you start reading, it is really strange that he is not yet recognized, at least as a supreme creator, a pure artist, a poet par excellence. So I tell myself that my judgments, my appreciations are influenced by my devotion for the master. That's how you know people feel sometimes because you are devoted. Therefore, you are finding everything so beautiful in it. And not everyone is devoted. I do not think this is true. But then why are men's hearts not yet enchanted by his words? Krishna played the flute. Only some gops and gopis went. And very often many of them felt they are mad, enchanted by the flute. So it's true that the call is there for everyone. There is a very beautiful passage in Savitri where this is described but from a different vantage point. Heaven's call is rare, rarer the heart that heats. Why? Because the doors of man are sealed to the eternal light. Only in an hour of an earth's needs nail to earth the human mass. Earth's needs. Only in an hour of uplifting stress men answer to the call of greater things. Or raised by some strong hand to breathe heaven air. They slide back to the mud from which they climbed. And take joy in safe return to a friendly base. Though something in them weeps for the glory lost and greatness muttered. Yet to be the common man they think is best. This is the state. Sometimes on a particular moment, this is the state of humanity. So, he says, the great Godhead, my call is there in men and things. But too immense my danger and my too immense my danger and my joy. So that's the reason why this happens. Not because somebody is devoted. Rather it's the other way around. Somebody has been called and then devotion grows. But the disciple is asking. So the mother gives an answer. When he says that, I wonder why people are not enchanted. So the mother says, who can understand Sri The First thing to remember is none of us understand. So this illusion should go. You may speak all your life with multiple ways. How can we understand? And one reason is that they are not words born from the mind. They are born from the depths and heights of the spirit where the human consciousness cannot reach ordinarily. So does it mean that we should not speak on Sri and the mother? No. Mother herself has permitted and people have gone and spoken. She has also said something very interesting that only through the psychic door you can have a glimpse. So there is a way that we can glimpse. But if we live in the illusion that we have understood everything that Sri has said, then we are just fooling ourselves and fooling others. So while it's okay, by her grace she can reveal and by her grace, she can make the dumb speak. Andha deke, bahira sune or langada chalkar pauche, kashi re. So it's true that she can make the dumb speak. But it's not the greatness of the man who speaks, but the greatness and glory of the divine who can literally make the dumb speak. But to everyone, still, the revelation is too vast to be ever exhausted. All the books that one can write on Sri and it's okay, they have to be written simply because there is a joy of approaching him in many ways. At the same time, even when we read Sri it passes through our mind. Sometimes we take that other route. No, you read directly Sri If one can read, it's beautiful. But even then, it will pass through the passage of the mind where it tends to get uh, diminished, corrupted, mixed up. I have seen people who ask strange questions on reading Sri they pick up something which you had never thought of it like that. One small little aspect which was has to be seen in relation with the rest of it. But well, there is. So there is a place for everything. Only one must know that however clear, logical it may seem to us, our understanding may seem to us, it is still limited. 
if we have that humility then life is beautiful <laughs> because there is no limit to the understanding who can understand shurbindo he is as vast as the universe and his teaching is limitless so we should not try to limit him to one particular approach for ex example people say oh shurbindo gives this yoga of transformation true shurbindo also reaffirms the vedantic teaching true shurbindo also affirms this approach where all life becomes yoga true but shurbindo also says that if there may be a need of people to sometimes isolate themselves true shurbindo speaks of engaging with life true shubindra speaks of rising to the heights and profundities of human nature true but shubindra also says you will encounter the darkest depths in your own consciousness true so and many many more things there were people who asked that you know should we write poetry and um, do art work and all says yes why not if you have to go to the divine sing joyously and go but if somebody would be too much involved in that he may say well the one thing needful is the divine all the rest is secondary so there is no one mode in which we can tie up shirpin we should not even try that because the moment we do this we turn it into a dogmatic religion and it can come in very strange ways for example i'll give one example because that um, used to be one of my dilemmas should one speak on shirbind or not the other dilemma was should one go out and or not because there was a whole set of people who believed only in you have to just do your own sadhana which is true can there be any doubt that without doing your own sadhana anything else you do is meaningless but does it mean being confined there or you can sh share and enter into a uh, in the in the true spirit and if moved by her impulsion so this used to be there of course i had my answers but two answers which came very beautifully one was i remember uh, i was with champaklal ji uh, chamanlal ji so i used to you know he, he was there south africa we were on a boat um i think what is that sea there pacific or whatever and then uh, i told him i have this dilemma all the time you know i go for talks i don't know whether i should go or not then he said a very interesting story he says that he had the similar thing and he asked the mother when he was being called so mother said something very interesting first of all she asked do you want to go he was called abroad for giving a uh, you know talk on i think solar panels things like that but of course with this background she said he said well uh, mother it depends on you she said are you i, I have no such urge she has are you very sure so he said consciously as far as i know but unconsciously we don't know what are the things which move us then she said no you should go because if you don't go somebody else will go and that will be a misrepresentation even manoj das had told me this story that when you know there was an occasion to write biography of shirbindo short biography then he asked the mother she said if you don't write somebody else will write so it's better that you write you at least you know are open and aware so this is the whole idea that's why you see satprem's adventure of consciousness but the other was when i read a set of letters which um, um you know this uh, judith tyberg jyoti priya from california so she used to give talks and people used to say oh she has lost her way usual thing you know she is going giving talks etc she asked the mother because you know these are genuine dilemmas which people feel and then the mother says if if everybody will remain in the ashram who will do my work and then she says don't listen to people what they say so this work you have come for this work if you don't do this work then it's it's your souls outflowing it's like a sudharma so we can't make absolute rules what may apply to one need not apply to the other but what is important is the sincerity within that's the only thing which one has to keep on so the three words that mother gave when shirbindo's uh, you know poster presentation was being made she said sincerity first word 
Second was respect. This is important. Any celebration of Sri Aurobindo. Sometimes, and I can mention from my uh, little perspective, um, I'm not comfortable when Sri Aurobindo's, you know, he's arranged, there's a low arranged table and the speakers are sitting on top and the focus is on that, a little higher. Now, this may sound my bit of devotion and, you know, that this is not how we deal with the master. But I heard a story where mother taught people how to sit before Sri Aurobindo. And there is one particular story someone told me where someone was sitting with legs crossed and Sri Aurobindo's picture was there. And uh, the mother admonished him. Now these are things which you intuitively feel, especially in the Indian setting. I mean, I remember when on television this Mahadev used to come. I would be sure that, you know, make sure that my feet are not there. This is something we learn. It's a basic respect. And I can say that very unconsciously many things like people um, uh, take out uh, things like uh, smarikas and, you know, commemorative volumes. They put Sri picture on top. One should be very careful because I have seen the book lying here. On top of it, very unconsciously, the people who have taken out are putting their mobiles on top of Sri picture. Now it shows an insensitivity to high things. That's why some things like putting mother's or Sri picture behind, similarly putting their pictures on top, that's why in All India magazine we have made it a rule not to put their pictures. Wow, what do people do? They put the picture, then they put their teacup. So these respect is not just, yes, yes, we respect. Respect means respect. Shobindo and the mother are physically present. That's how I take it. That if you just take this criteria, they are there on the stage. So before one sits, one prays and asks permission. May I, mother? And then your, her child, she has granted you to sit. Speak, do the work, get up, offer gratitude and come out. So, these are simple things that one needs to remember when it comes to respect. And third thing she said, see it climbs, adoration. We are not sitting in the presence of a philosopher or a thinker or a statesman or a politician. We adore and what do we adore in Sri Aurobindo? The mother said, that which you adore, the divine is that which you adore in Sri Aurobindo. Sometime when people say, I say, read his life. You can't even imagine that tapasya, even sages and seers, I have not read and I have read a lot of scriptures and life of saints and sages. You know, people have gone to Himalayas or sat in meditation and different kinds. Shubhinda surpassed all of it. I said, just have nothing else but humility before that tremendous tapasya and for whom he was doing that's even more astounding we do a, a sage and seer do these things for their own realizing the self <laughs> all that Sri had realized before coming to Pondicherry he had already realized he was doing the entire tapasya for earth and humanity what kind of tapasya that is we can't even imagine he had no reason to do it no business to do it except for that so that's where adoration. We cannot but adore. So these were the three things she said. And then to come back to her message, he is as vast as the universe and his teaching is limitless. Don't try to reduce him to a formula. As why is he saying two things? It's very interesting. He is as vast as the universe. Where is Shurabindo? There is somebody I saw a book written. Situating Shurabindo. I said, what kind of a, you know, thought process this could be? You can situate yourself. Where do you situate Sri He is everywhere in everything. So on this also someone asked me a question. Sri has said a bit haughtily, you know, depending on the thing you give an answer. Oh, Sri has said the Divine Mother is everywhere. Always behave as if she is looking at you. Where is she? So I said, see, that's your problem that you cannot see. <laughs> It's not my problem to convince you where is she. For me, she is there. If your eyes are closed, pray. Open my eyes that I may see, at least feel her everywhere. 
because you do not see it it doesn't mean that you know it's for you you can say okay i don't see that's fine <laughs> but when shurbindo writes the consciousness from which he writes so he is everywhere so he is vast is the universe and we know those story of medanand who was trapped in the some other world material universe and he is trying to say i have to go he used to go out of the body i have to go to earth nobody understands what earth is he meets two beings finally they see some ring or something and say or he says shurbindo oh shurbindo is earth and he is back to the body with thump so he is as vast as the universe you may go to the densest hell you call him he will come you climb to the highest heaven he is there as the raj rajeshwar so this idea of limiting shurbindo to a geographical boundary should not be there he is where the heart of the devotee is he is everywhere but one can contact so he is as vast as the universe what about his teaching his teaching is limitless so nobody can claim that i have understood completely shurbindo so he is he is as vast as the universe and his teaching is limitless so what do we do mother the only way to come a little close to him is to love him sincerely and give oneself unreservedly to his work don't try to sit with a dictionary and understand shurbindo you will understand neither because <laughs> shurbindo's usage of word it's a whole you know sometimes somebody should write a book on just the way shurbindo has used words i have given this example several times savitri life divine such uses of words suddenly bring in you know that touch of humor that wit if you read something like a sentence which is written earlier for a serious work like mine it is a poison and then he explains what is the poison so his usage of word is is so unique so beautiful so uplifting so how can we really understand the only way is to love him sincerely to love people say but how to love shirobindo read him read about him read his works look at his photographs come to the places where he has been and a day comes when you fall in love this is the way people fall in love there are two ways they fall in love one is love marriage the second is arranged marriage one is love at first sight very fortunate fellows <laughs> they may go through all the ups and downs after that but they have fallen in love that is the magnetic attraction charm of the divine beloved lucky fellows the other is arranged marriage you go you you meet you start then after some time you fall in love still you may fight but you cannot do without the person you have grown up with so there is two ways of all loving shurbindo one is to love it instantly instant love instant recognition the veil is stone and if that can happen it's a special grace it happens to people or else the other way is read shurbindo read about him then after some time by the very fact that one is coming in contact with his consciousness through these means one falls in love so is to love him sincerely that is called abhyabhicharini bhakti sincere love whoever you may be outwardly with people but inner core is only shurbindo that should be very clear sincere love love him sincerely and give one self unreservedly to his work we know what his work is work is within work is in this whole world world there is a collective dimension of work it's a big subject and we have just read some of his passages how his work is to be done in quietude in measure with the right attitude so to give one self unreservedly to his work meaning thereby one is not looking for gains and favor if i do this work for shurbindo will shurbindo ensure that not only me but all my progeny bhai bhatija everybody will be taken care of the divine may but well abhimanyu did die <laughs> so i keep reminding but abhimanyu became immortal by his death that is the difference so very clearly that 
unreservedly, not because of some returns that one may get. In that way, now comes the interesting part. In that way, each one does his best and contributes as much as he can to the transformation of the world which Sri has predicted. Now she leaves a very wide room open. Each one, if you do as an act of love, as an act of service, then it doesn't matter. Sometimes you may do a very bhavya samaro program or you may just one day have a little talk, you may have a quiet meditation or you may just that day just have a feeling in the heart that it is Sri 158th year, let me do something. You'll probably weave a nice mala of jasmine with your hands and offer it on, on his as a garland on his photograph. Doesn't matter. But it is the motive force in celebrating should be love and service to Sri If that is there, then each one will do his best based on how the person is inspired. And if one can do that, then one contributes as much as he can to the transformation of the world which Shurbindo has predicted. So I'll just read this again and then we'll stop. Who can understand Shurbindo? He is as vast as the universe and his teaching is limitless. The only way to come a little close to him is to love him sincerely and give oneself unreservedly to his work. In that way, each one does his best and contributes as much as he can to the transformation of the world which Sri has predicted. And in the end, always to remember to be open, to be receptive, in quietude, with gratitude, to offer oneself more and more with complete trust and surrender to Sri and the Mother. Namaste. Mm -hmm.